Hi everyone! It has been a hot minute since I vlogged for you and I apologize for that. So the past few weeks have been full like blinders reading mode for the Maverick list. So for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure you do because I'm really annoying about talking about being on the Mav list, um, I am on the Texas Maverick graphic novel reading list committee for the 2019 list. Um, and what it is, is librarians who are a part of Texas Library Association and then a part of the Young Adult Roundtable um, apply to be members of these committees and they um, put this list together. And so what the Texas Maverick Graphic Novel Reading List is, is it's a reading list um, for secondary students made up of graphic novels that are meant to be read for pleasure reading and to encourage kids to read graphic novels um, that we think are good works and so today was our voting meeting and I don't like vloggers who are not real and I don't like people who are not real and so today I'm coming to you about as real as it gets. I am not wearing any makeup. I'm in bed. I'm in my pajamas. My dogs are here with me. Um, I stayed up really late last night finishing reading the nominations and I didn't want to go in not having been prepared and having read all of the books that were nominated and so here I am. So I figured I would tell y'all a little bit about how the Mav list works, how the committee works, um, and then my nominations for it. So the list will be released on December 1st by TLA, and y'all get to see if my nominations made it in or not. So the way it works is every member on the committee nominates nine titles that have copyright years within the past two years of the list. So since we were working on the 2019 list, our, our copyright years were 2017, 2018, and 2019. Obviously 2019 isn't available yet. Okay, so we read lots of books and you pick your nine and of those nine nominations, one has to be manga, one has to be nonfiction, and one has to be a superhero book. And then everybody else on the committee reads your books and then we vote on them. In order for a book to be on the list, it has to have a majority decision and if it is a unanimous decision, then it gets a star. Um, so it's really, really fun. This has been one of the most exciting and rewarding experiences of my librarian career. So my nominations, my manga was Giant Spider and Me, and it is about a girl named Nagi. It's a post-apocalyptic tale. It is about a girl named Nagi who is waiting for her dad to return, and they live in a forest, and he has gone to find supplies and food for them, and she stays behind. And Nagi kind of passes the time by cooking, and she's so cute. She um, includes, I'm trying to find it, she includes her recipes in the book, and it walks you through how to make things, how to make food, how to make different meals, and they're really easy that I think kids would enjoy them. Um, and then a whole new audience like kids who like to cook would be interested in this. And so one day Nagi discovers the spider and takes it home with her. And I really, really appreciated how she from the beginning says, I don't know if the spider is male or female, so she refers to it as they. And I thought that was a really great example of how if you don't know something um, and you don't ask, then you just, you know, you use a pronoun that might be appropriate for that case. Um, so as the story goes on, she and the spider live together, and they get along really well, which I thought was really fun, um, and it's a very gentle, very kind story, and I like that, though it is manga, and you, you read it backwards, I was never confused, and I, there was never a point where I was like, I don't totally understand what's going on, um, I was never lost, I didn't feel like I was kind of on the outside of an inside joke, and I find that a lot of times I feel like that when I'm reading manga, um, and then at the end of it, um, someone comes to Nagi's home and you have to find out what happens. It's so good. This is volume one. There are multiple volumes, um, but this was the one that I nominated. My superhero novel, I don't think anyone will be surprised by that. My mom's texting me. I don't think anyone will be surprised by my superhero novel being just do do Miss Marvel. Volume 9. Um, so I nominated Miss Marvel Volume 9 because if you don't, if you haven't read the rest of the Miss Marvel series, you won't be lost going into this one. Um, 
there were other librarians today who said they hadn't read anything else about or any other Miss Marvel books and they read this one and they weren't lost. There was no um no no loss of the story and this is probably my favorite volume in the Miss Marvel series because it comes at a point where Kamala does not want to be Miss Marvel anymore. Um and she is at this kind of crossroads in her life where she doesn't she doesn't want her powers, she doesn't want her responsibility, and so she goes into the kind of hiding and no one knows where she is. And her friends pick up where she left off and they start acting as Miss Marvel to take care of the city for her. Um so they start dressing up as Miss Marvel and as Kamala to take care of their city. And it's so great. It is such a good story of friendship um, and how, you know, sometimes you have to ask for help and people are going to help you without asking for help. And so I really like that. And I think this is a beautiful demonstration, not just of friendship, but of self, self soul searching. I don't know how to say that correctly. Soul searching. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> Because Kamala has to really think and decide if this is right for her. And I loved it. My nonfiction, which I ended up, after a lot of discussion today, I ended up being a little questioning about this book. Um, but my nonfiction was I Am Gandhi by Brad Meltzer. And I love it. It's beautiful. It tells the story of Gandhi's life. Um, and it tells a lot about his reasoning for doing a lot of what he did and a lot of the background that went into why we know him the way we do. Um, keep in mind there is a lot left out of the story so I didn't know a lot of a lot about Gandhi when I read the book and when I nominated it and after some discussion today I discovered that this may not have everything about Gandhi um, but I do think that if you were to do like a research project or something with your students this would be a good kind of jumping point to have them read something and then do research off of that and you know find more information than just the book but this one was fun to read it is a good um it's a good nonfiction and it's a graphic biography and I don't think we have a lot of those but again I would do some more research not just reading that and some of my other nominations were Bingo Love, and I love, love, love this story. It is by Image Comics, and it's about two ladies, um, and they are African American, and they were, they weren't like dating or together when they were young, but they tried to have a relationship when they were teenagers, and it wasn't allowed at the time period. And I mean, I th I think that that's something that a lot of people can relate to even now where your family doesn't want you to be with someone, whether it's a homosexual or a heterosexual relationship or any kind of relationship. We all know what it feels like to have your parents not approve of someone that you want to be with. And so they send one of them away. And as the years go by, they both get older and they find each other again at bingo. But the thing is, at this point, they're both grandmothers, and they have families, and they're older, um, and they've got grandchildren and children, and, you know, they've been with their husbands for so long, but you cannot change the way you feel about someone, and it's a beautiful story of bravery and making the decision to say, screw it, you know, I deserve to be happy, and I deserve to have love, and I love it. I love, 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 love it. I cannot think of a book that made me feel as much as I did with it. Um, I was a little questioning about it because they, they do end up, <coughs> excuse me, together in the end. Um, and there was some kind of like inner turmoil that I had reading it because I kept thinking if this were my grandmother, how would I feel? But that's also reflected in the book and the the ladies' families do have their arguments made, um, but it is so good. And again, I think it's such a great story of bravery and doing what you need to and what is right for you and taking care of yourself. Um, another book that I nominated that I don't actually have because it is missing from my collection was Moonstruck Volume 1. It's another image comic and it is a fantastical depiction of the world where there is a centaur who is transgender and his butt, his horse butt, 
gets magically stolen and his friends who are werewolves have to help him find it and it's so good because the werewolves um one of them does not want to be a werewolf and so she has this inner conflict where she does not want to be a werewolf and she doesn't want to let her werewolf out and it's a really interesting to see because werewolves don't get the choice to be werewolves they are and so that was really fun. It, it's a fun story. Again, it is fantastical. Um, and I would put it in a high school, probably. It, the illustrations are beautiful. They're very fluffy. I wish I had it to show you. Um, but it, they're very fluffy. Um, there's lots of bright colors and pastel use. And it's just, it's so much fun. Another one that I don't have with me is The Broken Vow. And I'm going to get my iPad so I have the next book for you. And The Broken Vow, I've blogged about before, and it is the second part to the Spill Zone series, um, and it's the second book. And it ends a little bit on a cliffhanger, but I, I think they leave room for there to be a spinoff and not a third book. So another book that I nominated was... I'm getting my app to turn on, I'm sorry. Okay, I read it on Hoopla. Thank you to Austin Public Library. This is Mega Princess. Um, I actually ended up deciding that this one might not be suitable for a secondary list because it felt a little more elementary than anything, but it is good and it did end up being voted on by the other committee members. And so you'll find out on December 1st if it ended up making it. But it's about um, a young princess who does not want to be a princess. She wants to be a, um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, a private investigator and a detective. And she wants to solve mysteries. And her little brother goes missing and she goes on a, a really cute adventure to find him and what happened to him. Um, and the other two are both by Philip Pullman. So going into these, I had never read The Golden Compass. I have no background with it. I don't know anything about it whatsoever. Um, so the first one was The Golden Compass, the graphic novel, the complete edition by Philip Pullman. Um, I think I have vlogged about this before. I don't remember. But it is the graphic adaptation of The Golden Compass. And I honestly have never read the Golden Compass novel, and I don't feel like I missed anything in reading the adaptation. I think the adaptation is beautiful. Um, I think it has a place in every library, whether you're in middle school or high school or in a public library, because it kind of takes what is so hard to understand um, and the fantastical part of the Golden Compass, and it puts it in a way that you can see it, and I think that helps a reader a lot. I have this in my library at the middle school that I work at, and my kids have enjoyed it so far. And my last one I have for you is another Philip Pullman book, and this is The Adventures of John Blake, and it is The Mystery of the Ghost Ship. It is really cool. It reminds me a lot of Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, there's this ghost ship that kind of just haunts the seas, and then these people start investigating it, and who the people who work on the ship are and why they are on the ship and how did they get there in the beginning. There is um, some fighting. There is adventure. Um, there's a lot to do with a family who is taken, they're not out to sea, but they're um, on a, a sea trip on like a yacht and they end up getting caught in a storm and one of their children ends up being on the ghost ship with John with John Blake. Um, and it's really fun. It's a great adventure story. I have um, no problem with it if I were to put it in my middle school library. I think that it was really fun. And again, the illustrations are just beautifully done. And I think that anybody would enjoy it if you like a good adventure and a good mystery. So that's all I have for you. I'm going to go back to bed. It's been a long weekend. Um, and now I get to prepare for the Sybils Book Blogger Awards. So I went from one large reading list to another. So here we go, more nominations, and I will get those to you soon. I'm really excited for this Sybils, Sybils panel, um, and to see how it goes, and I can't wait to share that with y'all too. So happy reading, enjoy the rest of your weekend, bye!